everybody. Hope you're having a great day, no matter where you are. Today, we're going to take a look at one of my most favorite underdog Linux distributions. It's Arch-based, and it comes to us from the great country of Germany. And it's definitely a different and fresh take on Arch and KDE. It's Blue Star Linux. Every time I've looked at this one, it just seems to get better and better every time I look at it. When you first download it, throw it on a USB, or you open up in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. You get a nice little dock down here. And then up top, you've got the folder widget where you can have all your folders right on the home screen. Then you've got, of course, the installer right here. And then you go up top, and you've got a little drop down that pops up up here. And if you want to click on that, it shows you all of your different applications that are available. First, I want to go to settings. So let's go check out some stuff in system settings. I want to get some info here. Let's wait for that to open up. And we'll scroll down to the bottom and we'll go about this system. And right here, it shows that we are using the most up-to-date version of KDE Plasma, which is 5.27.2. And we're using kernel version 6.2.5-arch1-1. So this is an Arch spin. It doesn't have its own kernel. It's relying completely on the Arch kernel. And right now it's showing we're on AMD Ryzen, all that great information. Not going to go over the settings too much because those of you out there that are familiar with KDE at all know how to get around here. Uh, if this is something you would like to see me do a video on, if you're new to Linux or new to KDE, let me know and I'll go through and do an updated video on all the settings. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then when you come back down, I want to go ahead and open up the terminal. I want to see kind of what we're using resource-wise. So let's go ahead and see if we've got HTOP. Let's go ahead and make that a little bigger so you can see it. And it shows that we're using about 944 megs at rest of the two gigs that I have issued to this machine. So it runs pretty lightweight for a KDE environment, even though you've got some of the eye candy here. You've got a great background, a different look panel down here, and then of course the drop down up here. You're not sacrificing a lot of resources to get that look, which is one of the things I do truly like about Blue Star Linux. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and we will close the window. They don't have a website per se. I will put a link on how you can download it, but it comes with a nice icon pack out of the box. You've got Dolphin as your file manager. It's easy to get around. You guys have seen me cover Dolphin before, and I really do like the theming that they use here. Now, if I compare this to something like a Garuda, it's not going to be as user-friendly as Garuda because it doesn't have a lot of the help tools that Garuda comes with right out of the box, whether you want to install extra software and stuff like that. Um, and it doesn't have those tools, so it can be a little bit harder to get around because if you come up here and you type in software, you will notice that you have Octopi as your software manager. Now, it doesn't have like a PayMac or anything like that. Now, you can download PayMac and put it on there if you want to. That's truly up to you. But Octopi usually will get you what you need. So you can come over here, and it's like a synaptic. It, it's a type search and install type situation. So you would just type in what you're looking for up here, and then you could install it from here. Now, Octopi is one of those situations where in a virtual machine, you're not going to get a lot of returns. So let's say if I put in Caden Live, see, it's not going to bring it up. Once you install it, it's actually going to refresh those repositories, and you will be able to install from it. But if you're going to install software on Bluestar, it's going to be through Octopi or another package management system that you might install afterwards. Now, one thing I've always liked, the overall appearance. It's got a great set of wallpapers that it usually comes with. I'm going to see what we got here. You've got your standard KDE. Uh, there's a BMW. They kind of throw in some different feels and looks to it, so it's really up to you. But I do like the wallpaper it comes with out of the box. That is extremely beautiful. And you can always, you know, most people are going to just take their wallpaper folder and link it anyway, so that's truly up to you. Now, the top panel, if you come up here, You've got your power. You've got a little cheat sheet right here for your system load. You've got your Octopi right here, and it lets you know there's 99 updates available, and then your standard hidden icons right here. I do like the transparency that they give you. And then if you come down to the bottom, you've got Dolphin Console. It comes with GIMP out of the box, VLC, LibreOffice Writer, FileZilla, Thunderbird for Mail, Firefox, Pigeon Internet, and then, of course, your system settings right there. But I do like the fact that you get your home folders right here on the screen. Um, if you're somebody that likes Arch, but you don't need your handheld as much 
as, say, you would with, like, a Garuda. Blue Star is definitely something to take a look at. Their spin and their look of everything is really refreshing. It's a different take. It's a different view. But it's definitely a, an operating system that you need to be a little familiar with Linux before you use for the simple fact that if you don't want to use Octopine, you want to do everything through Terminal, you can. And obviously, if you want to install a secondary like Paymac or anything, like I said previous, you can do that too. But like I said, I will link the download to Blue Star Linux below. Download it, throw it on a USB, or maybe put it up in a backup virtual machine, take it for a test drive. I'm pretty sure you'll like it. Take a look at it. If you do, come back here and let me know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.